This minus sign, does it affect all these numbers right here? Yes or no? Yes. yes. Okay, so the new numbers are a negative, a positive is a negative. Okay. And a negative of a negative is a positive. Positive. Okay, exactly. Okay. So everybody okay? Right there? So now, letters and letters together. Ready? Uh, let's see. We have. 5x and minus 8x. Give me a number. Negative 3. Yeah, 3x. And a 3 and a 9 together is a positive something. What is it? 12. 12. Okay, there's my answer right there. And again, like I said, domain right now, if it's a generic answer, it just says negative infinity to infinity. Any number you want to put in there, it works fine. Okay, so that's question number 6, letter B. Okay, everybody okay with A? Everybody okay with B? Yes. Some skills, man. You got some skills. All right. I'm going to go question letter six, six C. Six letter C. This one says f of x, the same business, 5x plus 3. And g of x is 8x minus 9. This one says find f times g of x, which means f of x times g of x. So that means multiply the first one, 5x plus 3 times 8x minus 9. There you go. So, to do 5x plus 3 times 8x minus 9, you can do FOIL or binomial poly, polynomial multiplication. Uh, There's a bunch of words. Let me just do, let me do it the way I do in my class, okay? The first number, see my finger right there? 5x times 8x. What do you think that is? What's 5x times 8x? 40x squared. That's right. So let me say 40x squared. That's right. Now, leave your finger right there. Don't move it. And 5x times negative 9. What is that going to be? Negative, uh, negative 45x. Right. Do it again. So 5x times 8x is 40x squared. 5x times negative 9 is negative 45x. Now, once you do that, I told my guys, okay, now move to the next number. Ah, uh, there. So now it's 3, right? So 3 times 8x. Give me that number. 3 times 8x is? 24x. 4x, exactly. And then 3 times negative 9 looks like it's negative 27. Okay, so now we have all that stuff right there in front of me. So the only thing is only at the middle ones or subtract the middle ones. So this is 40x squared calculator. What is 24, positive 24 and negative 45? Is negative something. What? Negative 21. That's it. Negative 21x minus 27. Okay, it's done right there. So now, and again, the generic number for this domain, what numbers will always work? Negative infinity to infinity. Those are the numbers that work for this problem. Okay, that's, that's letter 6C. Okay. All right, I'm going to do that. 6 letter D is the next one on my list here. It says the same problem, f of x is 5x plus 3, and g of x is 8x minus 9. So now it's going to say find f over g of x. Okay, this is over here. Say. So f of x over g of x. That means 5x plus 3 on top, on the bottom, 8x minus 9. So there's my answer right there. Put one on top of the other. Okay, now, the only thing about division is... You can't have zero on the bottom, okay? I mean, I'll give you an example. If I say zero over three, the answer is zero, okay? But if I flip it, if I say, uh, how about four divided by zero? This is undefined. Does that make sense? Remember this from algebra one? Zero on top, that's fine. Zero under, undefined. So if this thing here in the bottom is a zero, it's gonna mess up the problem. So the way you do this problem is you go like this. You set, come over here. I'm gonna set it up. I'm gonna go 8x minus nine. Is it possible it can become a zero? Yes, there is one time it's gonna happen. So 8x minus nine at nine, at nine, these are gone. So 8x equals nine, and then divide by what, you tell me. You 
Divide this and divide this. Give me some numbers you divide by. Got to get rid of the 8x. Just the 8. Just get rid of the 8. How do you do that? Divide by 8. Divide by 8. Uh -huh. So that means x is 9 8. So 9 8, if used, is for sure going to mess up the bottom part of this. It's going to make this bottom what? Zero. So this is the answer. x is never 9 over 8. So the domain of this problem is what? Just never use 9 8. That's all it means. Can you anything you want? Just don't use that number because it'll mess up this right here. Okay? So domain is just infinity, 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 infinity. This one, that's the only thing that you have to say. Don't use that number. It'll mess it up. All right. So there's 6ABC. So now we're going to use this. this uh, well, ABCDEE. E is e next. 6 letter E. It says. F of X is the same problem. Uh, it says 5X plus 3. And G of X is the same problem. 8X minus 9. Okay. So now, this one says F plus G of X. Well, we know what that is. It's from the, it's from the first one we did, the letter A one. And for that one, I ended up with um, 13x minus 6. So f plus g of x is this one right here. Okay. Now, let's put a number in there. So the number that I want you to do is f plus g of 3. That means you're going to have to put a 3 right here, like that. So now, f plus g of 3, uh, I don't know, 3 times 13, what is that? 39. 39 minus 6. So F plus G of 3 is what number? 33. 33. Okay. So that's the 6 letter E. Okay. So now 6 letter F. F of X again is 5X plus 3. And g of x is 8x minus 9. This one said, what is f minus g of x? Well, if I look at my answer from before, let me make my answer from before. It's a minus 3x and a positive 12. That's what it was originally. And in this sense, what happens when you put a 2 in there? So f minus g of 2 is minus 3 times 2 plus 12. So f minus g of 2. Ready? What's negative 3 times 2? Negative 6. So now F minus G of 2 is, I don't know, what is that number? So negative 6 and plus 12 is, uh, what did y'all get? 6. 6, okay, that's it. 6. Positive 6. Uh, let's go to the next one. Uh, e, e, F, G. Let me go letter G. Letter G is 6 letter G. It says F of X is 5 plus 3. G of X is 8X minus 9. So now, and this one was, let me find it. F times G of X. F times G of X, on this one it was uh, 40X squared minus 21X minus 27. And this thing is going to go F times G of, what number do they want? They want a 4. Okay, so you're going to go 40 times 4 squared, you don't need that right there, minus 21 times 4 minus 27. So F times G of 4. 40 times 4 times 4 minus 21 times 4 minus 27. Okay, so now on your calculator, I want you to do this. What is 4 times 4 times 40? Give me that on the calculator. What's 4 times 4 times 40? Do it in the calculator. I'm doing your hand. What y'all get? 4 times 4 40. times 40. How much? 640? 40. And negative 21 times 4, give me a number. 84. Negative 84. And negative 27. And you put all these numbers in your calculator right now. 
640 minus 84 minus 27 is exactly, give me a number. 529. 529. That's it. Okay, for that one. All right. So now, F over G of X, and this is number 6, 8, is, let me get it in mind, is 5X plus 3 over 8X minus 9. Okay. This one says put a 1 in there. So F over G of 1. 5 times 1 plus 3, 8 times 1 minus 9. So this is going to give you 5 plus 3, 8 minus 9. So it looks like that's going to be F over G, 1. Looks like I have 8 over negative 1. Can I reduce that? Can I divide those two numbers? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, if I divide a, a positive by a negative, what's the answer going to be? Negative 8. Negative eight, that's the answer right there. Okay. So that's that's six H. Is everybody okay with letter six H? Yes? Okay. Alright. So I'm gonna do the next one. Alright, question number six, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Okay. So now we're gonna do uh, number seven, it says find the difference quotient. Okay, find the difference quotient. All right, let's see mm -hmm. what that means. And it's going to say f of x is equal to x squared minus 8x plus 5. So there's the original part right there. So it says find the difference quotient of that thing right there. It is a formula. I'm just going to give it to you. It looks like this. X plus H take away F of X all over H. This is called difference quotient formula. Just, just write it down. Don't memorize it. Just know what it looks like. All right. So I'm going to put all this stuff in here. And let's see how it goes. So put a big line like this and the little one over here. Okay, put a big, big parentheses in the little one. All right, so now, f of x, this one right here, is is that exactly this one right above it? See, f of x is f of x, and then that's right here. So I'm going to put this right here. The old one is this x squared minus 8x plus 5. So f of x, this part of the, of the function says this is what? That right there. So everybody okay with that first part, old one? Now this is the, the harder part, the new, uh-oh. All right, the second one says put X plus H, all of it, inside there, inside there, and inside there. This X plus H now, it's gonna go there and there and there. So it's no longer, now it's gonna be this, and I'm just gonna write it like this, see if you can see it. Square. All right, so O1, there's a new one. Then it doesn't have just X and X, but this one has an X plus H there and X plus H there. Where did I get this from? Right here. This one goes in there, this one goes in there, and this one goes in there. So the new, the old. Okay, this is like the hardest part of the whole thing. Okay, everybody okay with step number one? All right, so now, well, you're in algebra one, high school land. X plus H squared means you do it how many times? Twice. X plus H times X plus H. Okay, put the line at that. And negative eight times X. Give me a number. Negative eight X. Eight X. And negative eight times H. Give me a number. Negative H. Eight H. Right. Okay. So now, and this sign minus sign here. You think it's going to affect all these numbers after it? Yes or no? Is negative sign? Does it change the first number? So negative or positive is a negative. Negative. And a negative of a negative is a positive. Positive. And a negative of a positive is a negative. Negative. Okay. All right. 
So we're right there. All right, so now I'm gonna do foil, F-O-I-L, whatever you wanna call it. Ready? I'll do a slow motion. X times X. X squared. squared. X times H. One XH, yes or no? Yes. So X times X, X squared, X times H, one XH. Now the next one. X times H again, or H times X, or X times H is the same thing. So another one X plus H, or XH. The last one, H times H, give me an answer. H squared. H squared, and everything else, I'm just gonna copy it, copy it, that one. All right, so we're right there. So now, let me, before I see, don't say, don't look at this right now. Okay, when you were in first grade, long time ago, they had something called counting bears. You heard of those? The little red, yellow, green, purple, orange bears? Maybe you didn't have them, but they, they're there, okay? So if I have one bear plus another bear, that must mean I have two little bears. Does that make sense? Suppose you have more. Suppose you have three bears, and then somebody else gives you four more little bears in your hand. Then this person has how many? What's 3B plus 4B? Is it 7B? Think about it. Seven bears. So go back to this. What do you think 1XH and 1XH is? 2XH. Ah, that's it. You got it. X squared plus 2XH plus H squared. Okay, and a bunch of stuff is going to go away always on this thing, this different quotient. A lot of the stuff disappears in the next step. Ready? Let's start. X squared and negative x squared. You think those will cancel? Look at my fingers. Yes? Yes. Gone. And you think negative 8x and positive 8x will cancel? Yes. All right. And you think the positive 5 and the negative 5 will cancel each other out? Yes. Well, leftovers are this one, 2xh plus h second minus 8h over h. And I'm going to break it into a bunch of little fractions. This one over h, and this one over h, and this one over h. So now, can h divide 2xh? This one right here? What's going to be left over? 2x. Exactly. And can H divide H squared up here? What's left over? H. And can H divide negative 8H? What's left over? Negative 8. Negative 8. So this is the answer right there. Okay, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do it again. I just got to change the number to do it again because this is kind of a lot of steps. Yes, and later on when you're, you can do all this stuff in your head. Not right now, okay? Not until December. All right, same problem. I'm just going to change the numbers. All right, ready? So it's going to say find the difference quotient. This time I'm going to use, I'm going to use big numbers equally. It doesn't matter. X squared plus 10X plus 90. I'm using double digits. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what you, you have calculus anyway, so it doesn't matter. All right, ready? So, f of x plus h minus f of x over h. So, big line, big parentheses, little parentheses. I know this one is x squared plus 10x plus 90. That's what goes right there. Now, this one. Now, it's going to be not, not x, but it's going to be x plus h squared plus 10 times x plus h plus 90. The old one, the new one's right here. Old and the new. So write that one down. So now, I'm going to do FOIL. Ready? x plus h times x plus h plus, ready? What's 10 times x? 10x, okay. What's 10 times h? 10h plus 90, okay. Minus, this minus sign is going to affect all these numbers. So negative or positive is a negative. 
negative or positive is a negative, and negative or positive, another negative. Okay, so now, go right there. So now I'm going to FOIL all this business out, ready? So, x times x, let me tell me that, what is that? x squared. x squared. Okay. And x times h. 1xh. Right. And xh again, 1xh plus h times h. h squared. Is that h okay, number two, I'm just going to copy 10x plus 10h. That's 90, minus it, minus it, minus it, great. So now, 1xh and 1xh, is that 2xh again? Yes. So x squared, that's 2xh, plus h squared, plus 10x, uh, where's my 10h? Oh, there's an h right here. Plus 10h, plus 90, minus x squared, minus 10x, minus 90, all over this thing here. Now, x squared and x squared, you think those are gone? Where my fingers are? Yes. And what about 10x and 8 to 10x? You think those are gone right here, where my fingers are? Yes. And what else is gone? Positive 90 minus 90. And that one's gone too. So you have left over is 2xh plus h squared plus 10h over h and that's going to be 2xh over h plus h squared over h plus 10h over h. And if I reduce all this business here, first one, 2xh over h is give me, gives me what? 2x. Mm -hmm. And h squared divided by h gives me what left over? h. Uh -huh. And the last one, 10h divided by h is what? The last one, this one here. Ten. Ten. Okay, ten. You're right. Just ten. You know what? Let me use little numbers. Maybe I'll use single digits because maybe double digits are too hard for y'all. That's okay. I'm gonna use the same problem, single digits this time. Maybe I use little, 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 little numbers. Maybe it'll be better, right? Maybe. Okay. Let me do a, a same problem, little numbers. Let's see how it goes. 7.1111112 to make it so it says same thing. It says find the difference quotient and we're gonna have f of x is x squared minus two x plus one. They use I'm gonna use two and one this time. Single digits. Two one two one. Alright, so there's a problem. And the formula, same thing again f of x plus h minus f of x over h. There's the formula, difference quotient formula. So now, big line, this, something goes here and something goes there. All right, in the last one, what do you think goes right here in the last block? To me, tell me. The old one. The old one? Is it x squared? What else? Minus 2x plus 1. Right, that's it. The old one goes on the right side. Are you okay with the old one? All right, on the left side, I'm going to put the new stuff. Not x anymore, but it really is going to be x plus h. The whole thing is squared. Minus 2 times x plus h, and then plus the 1. So the new and the old. Okay, everybody okay with step number one? Yes. Yeah? Okay. Now, step number two, you do FOIL, right? Algebra one FOIL. Uh, all that means is x plus h times x plus h. So, negative two times x, what is that going to be? Negative two x. And negative two times h, what is that going to be? Negative 2h. Right, exactly. Plus 1. Now, this minus sign right here is going to affect all these guys. Ready? So negative of x squared is negative x squared. And negative of a negative is a? Positive. Positive. And negative of a positive is a negative. Over h. All right. So now we're going to FOIL. FOIL. 
So, x times x, somebody tell me the answer. x squared. x squared. x times h. 1xh? h. h. Uh-huh. And then x times h again. 1xh again? Yes. And then h times h? h squared. Squared. Anything else I'm going to copy? Minus 2x, minus 2h, plus 1, minus x squared, plus 2x, minus 1, all over h. So now, this one with the check marks. I'm going to add those guys together. So x squared plus, what is 1xh and 1xh? 2xh. 2xh plus h squared minus 2x minus 2h plus 1 minus it. That one minus 1. All right. So now, always, when you get to this place, points this out goes away. Ready? x squared and x squared, do they go away, yes or no? Yes. Yes, gone. What about negative two x and plus two x? Yes. Yes. What about positive one and negative one? Yes. Yes. So we have two x h plus h squared minus two h over h leftovers. Break it up two fractions, three fractions. This one and that one and that one. So now from there so first one 2xh over h what does that become right here 2x Oops, done next one what does h squared over h become h and the last one what does negative 2h over h become negative 2 negative 2 and that's it right yeah that's, that's the answer alright here let me do 10 more of these so y'all get it okay I'm kidding I'm not gonna do that you can do go your go to my math lab and do them yourself okay is that okay? I say yes. All right. So I'm going to get out. I'm going to go to the next question. Number seven is done. I'm going to say you have the skills. That's it. We're done. Let me go to the next question. Seven is good. All right. Number eight. It says a uh, bunch of stuff. It's by X intercept, Y intercept, domain range. Uh, I just show you what that is. Okay. Uh, okay. Let me just do the graph. Number eight. You ready? Um, it's gonna be a picture. Let me, let me look at the, let me look at this picture. Okay, it looks like this. This and that. It says go to the right. One space to the right, and then there's a dot there. Got it. And it says one zero. Go up one dot. Okay, right there. I'm just drawing it from my paper, so you're. Your picture will be a little bit different when you do it in my math lab because it'll just kind of move the numbers around. And then the last one's negative three and one, so it goes three and this one, so it goes like here. Somewhere. The other one is three and one out here. Okay. So, kind of looks. You know, I don't know what it, you know what it looks like. If you all be, you probably never been here, but there's a place called Waterburger in San Antonio, and they have hamburgers there. Okay, and it has a big W in the front. Ask your mom and dad, they'll tell you where it is because you probably don't know. But it's called Wada Burger, okay? And it's like everything there is orange, you know? My one of my favorite colors, orange, like orange shirts, orange jackets, whatever. And red also, but okay, so now here is the, the picture. This number right here, it said it's negative three and up one space. This number here is three and up one space. And it says this number here. On my paper, it says it's, it's negative one and zero, and this one is positive one and zero. And it says this number here is zero and up one space. Okay, so that's what it looks like. It has, it's like a big W. I could tell you if you go to Whataburger, get one for that. And here's a here's a question for you. This is this has nothing to do with this thing, but I'm just think, I was thinking about Whataburger. Okay, at at 2.34 a.m. on Saturday night, you're talking to your best friends, right? Your four best friends in San Antonio. And you tell them, hey, guys, you know what? I'm kind of hungry. I want to go eat something at 2.34 a.m. on Saturday night. Is Waterburger open, yes or no? Yes. You get whatever you want at that time? Yes. So when I go at that time, I usually order a, a double meat, double cheese, Double bacon, and yeah, it makes it better. Okay. 
I can BAC ON, I guess. And I water size everything. That way I get more in rings, more stuff, more bigger drink. Okay. And I'm gonna tell you right now, every time that I eat on Saturday night at 2 30 in the morning at Whataburger, it tastes better than the day one. Why? Why is that hamburger at 2 30 in the morning better than 12 o'clock in the afternoon? And I, I get What's that? Because half time you're drunk, you're drunk around that time. Uh, no, <laughs> well, yeah, that might be a, that might be a, one of the reasons <laughs> for me. Because you know what? At that time, that's when they have the best cooks. <laughs> oh, yeah. best cooks are there. They make your water burger. You get that that at two thirty four a.m. You get that water burger with everything on it and then big giant onion rings and stuff. You eat and go, man, this is really good. <laughs> and then here's the thing. At 2.34 a.m., I ate this thing, and it was open, so I ate it. 20 minutes later, I say, okay, I'm done. You go home and exercise or sleep? Sleep. There you go. Smart thinking. Forget about exercise. You just take this over. You say, you know what? I'm so tired and sleepy. I'm just going to go home and rest till tomorrow. Okay? Yeah. But I'll tell you right now, try it again. Try it. Saturday night at 2.34 a.m., go get out. Double meat, double cheese, double bacon. One time I got this one. Have you tried that triple? It has three meats, three bacons, three cheese, and it has all the extra lettuce, tomatoes, and junk in it. And then you eat this thing here. This is a lot of stuff. And it's only like a dollar fifty more. Okay, anyway, so you can try it out this weekend. Okay, let's go back to this problem. Let's go with that. Now that water burger thing's on. Okay. So domain, I'm gonna do, well, let me do this first. X intercepts. What that means is this is the Y and this is the X axis. What numbers are hitting the X line right here? I think this one is hitting it, right? Negative one and zero. And also I think one and zero is hitting it also. So these two dots right here are negative one, zero and one, zero. These are hitting the X line right here. Next question, which numbers are hitting the Y intercepts? Which ones are hitting the Y line right here? Well, the one that hits it is this one right here. And this, this one right here is, what is it? Zero and one. one. All right. So we get the x-intercepts, we get the y-intercept. All right, now the question they asked me, let me look at my thing. This is the domain also. Okay, let's see what domain is. Domain just means left and right, okay? So and then I'm going to put a little dot line so you can see what I'm going to cut it off at. Right here, and I'm going to put it right here. Okay, so I'm doing, I'm cutting off this picture. All right, so to the left and right. To the left, this picture goes all the way to what? Negative three. That's it, right? It starts right there. Negative three. And then it moves to the right. How far to the right? Three. Three. So it stops between negative three and three. So domain is what? It's stuck in here. So does that make sense for domain? Left and right. Right there somewhere. So now the other magic word. Range. Range is the bottom of the graph to the top of the graph, all right? So the bottom of the graph looks like it's right here at zero. See right here at zero? It's stuck right there at zero. Then it goes up a little bit. So it's stuck right here at zero, and it goes up to what number? One. Yep, so it goes from zero, pull. So from zero, what? Up oh, one, that's it. And it's trapped like this. Let me put some traps. It goes like this, and it goes like that. So, and again, domain is left and right, and then range is what? Up and down, like this. Does that make sense? Domain yes. and range. Follow me. Okay, everybody okay with domain and range right there? All right, so now, let me, the next, let me look at the next question it says on the thing. It says, when is this thing increasing? Increasing. All right, so think of yourself like this. This is you, and you're walking on this graph. So from here, are you going down the stairs? Yes or no? If you go this yes. way. So it's decreasing. No, I don't want that. I don't want increasing. And then from right here from negative one, are you going upstairs now? Yes. Okay, so from negative one to what is it? To zero? It's going upstairs. And then from there, after that, what am I doing? Am I going downstairs again? Yes. Decre yep. I don't want that. And then from one to three, what am I doing? Is it going upstairs now again? Yes. So from one to three, 
So it's going upstairs right here, not there, upstairs right there. Does that make sense? So I do the increasing. I'll give you an example of this. Let's say, uh, stock market. All right, stock market, and we'll tell you what that is. Like you wanna buy oil from Exxon or Dow Chemicals, you can buy stock if you have money. If you have thousand dollars, five thousand, ten thousand dollars, you can buy stock in Exxon or IBM stuff, right? Okay. And you probably I know you probably do have that in your wallet or your purse right now, ten thousand dollars cash. Okay. But there's probably some people that don't have that kind of money right now. That's okay. Don't look at it for now. I'm sure you have it. Don't even look at your wallets and stuff right now, because it's it's in there. So now what you do is this today, today when you get home. Call grandma number one and tell her, grandma, <clears throat> I'm doing a project for Palo Alto College and I need to borrow some money from you and just get, I don't know, $10,000 cash. Get it from grandma. She has retirement money. Don't worry about it. Get the money and as soon as you get it, buy something, IBM stock or something. Okay, as soon as you buy the stock, can, that, can you start losing money on it? Can you start losing your money as you put in there? Yes. Can you also make more money? Yeah, so you can go down and up and down and up and down and up. It'll, it'll start, goes up and down. That's just the way it works, okay? So now, I did the increasing one. Now let's do the decreasing, okay? Decreasing. Uh, from right here, from negative three, are you going down the stairs to negative one? You're here, are you decreasing right there? Is it going down? Yes. Yeah, so it's decreasing from negative three to negative one. And from there up, and then from zero to one, are you going downstairs again? Yes. So from zero to one, you're going upstairs. All right, so now that's that's all. We got domain range, external says, decreasing and increasing. And then the last question says, is this an even function? Is it evenly distributed like this? If you look at this picture, is this right here exactly the same as the one on the right side? If you cut it in the middle, you get the same picture on the butt, left side, right side, like a big butterfly thing. Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. So yes, it's even. If it's not, if it's off to the side like that, then it's not. But if it's like this, exactly, exactly like that, then it's even. Is it evenly, this is half right here, and then this half are matching. Okay. Oh, I forgot this. And then also, when you go to the tonight, when you go to Waterburger at two thirty, get this. This is my favorite, lemon pie. And tell them, hey, maybe fresh new ones. No, I don't want those. Put some new ones in there right now. And it takes about 20 minutes. You can wait. And it, but they'll be brand new, right? Yeah, okay. All right, number six. Is that okay with number six? Domain, range, we're done. All right, let's go to the next one. Let's go to, uh, uh, I guess number nine. All right, so let me, let me draw the picture of number nine. Number nine, it says, find the absolute, uh, find the absolute max and the absolute min. Okay, so it says find the absolute max, absolute min. All right, so they give you a graph. They're gonna give you a graph like this. And I'll just draw it kind of what it looks like. This from here. And it goes on to this spot right here. And it goes way over here somewhere. And then it goes back down to right here somewhere. It goes like that. It's just a picture. It goes up, down, up, down. Okay. Think like this. Star market again. Star market. You got money. Wait, grandma, you put it in a star market, you lost money. Oh, man. But then after so many hours, you were making money. Yay. And then you start losing money again. Does that make sense? Win and lose, win and lose. All right, so this number is, I'm just gonna give you the numbers that they use. These zero, three belongs there. And they said that this one is two and one. All right, belongs there. And they said this one is four, seven. This one. And they said this one here is a five, three. Okay, that's the numbers they have on, on the, that particular graph. All right, so now, this is a, this is a max. Because why? It's a high point. Then you keep going, you go lower, 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 lower. Oh, this is a min because it's a low point in the graph. And then what happens? 
Was up, 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 up. Oh, that's a high point. This is a max right here. Does that make sense? And then you go right here. Oh, that's another low point. This is the min again. Okay, so now it has a max right there, a min right there, a max right there, a min right there, right? But the absolute max, the highest one, oh, forever is which one? Is it this one here, the four seven? Yes. Yeah, so four seven is the max, absolute max. And the absolute min was the absolute, what's the lowest this graph ever went? Two one. Two and one. Yes. Okay. It went down and up and then down, down to this number, but this one is lower. So this is the absolute lowest one. This is the absolute what? Biggest one. Does that make sense? Yes. The max, the min. Okay. Okay. Now, this other word. Local, min, and max. Okay, for those, you can just put this. Uh, I, I think on, the, on this one, they just said do the same thing. Local max, you can just say it's four, seven is also a local max. It's right here. And local min, it was a uh, two and one. one. In other words, this is local max, local max, local min. Lo in other words, they're all, local means just it's in there somewhere. That's all I mean. But there's always one. The lowest, the highest, the lowest, the highest. Does that make sense? All right. Let me let me do one more like this one. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna change the numbers a little bit, okay? And then I think we can get the skills in this. And I'll just do one more, and then we're done. Eww, but if you go to Waterburger at twelve thirty, you know what? There's a lot of people there, isn't it? At twelve o'clock, other people from that oil field from the. Toyota place show up. Yeah. No, yeah. Twelve o'clock, twelve thirty. Yeah, that's okay. You can wait in line. It'll be okay. All right, ready? So now, um, this is gonna. I'm just gonna say, find the absolute max. Find the absolute min. Okay. I'm gonna ask you. And this is question number nine again. Nine point seven 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 nine 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 or something. All right, there it is, 9.777999. All right, ready? And I'm going to draw a picture. So let's say, let's go to grandma number two, because you already got 10000 from the first grandma, and she's out having more money. That's fine. You know what you do? Go to grandma number two, okay, and talk to her. So, grandma, I'm doing this really important project for Palo Alto. <laughs> Can I borrow a few dollars from you? She says, Sue, how much do you need? Oh, I don't know. Ten thousand dollars cash would be nice. So you look, I'll get you for you. Go this afternoon. We'll go to the bank and get it for you. Okay. Thank you. His grandmas are always nice. They always say yes. All right. So now this is what's gonna happen in this thing. I'm just gonna pretend here. We're gonna make up a graph. All right. So you buy it right now. At this moment, you're you're you put ten thousand dollars into the stock. As soon as you got it, it went up right there. So at at two, it was fifteen. In other words, you put you put it for ten thousand, and then two hours later, you say, you know, I'm gonna check my stock, and it said, and it said your stock is worth fifteen thousand dollars right now. You wanna sell it? He said, no, nah, I don't wanna sell it right now. And then you wait it, uh, and then. Five hours later, you, you check your stock and you go, what? What do you mean? So now your stock is worth how much money? 3000 So what's worth 10000 here? And two hours later, it went up to 15000 Five hours later, it dropped down to $3,000. You say, oh man, I should have sold it over here. And then it goes up again. And this is uh, it's at seven hours. Is worth nine or let's say eight thousand. Seven hours you're eight here, eight thousand. Okay. And then anyway, I'll do one more. I'll make it a sad thing. Well, no. <laughs> he said okay. And then nine hours later, it, your your stockbroker guy said, you know what, your stuff's only worth a thousand now. You want to sell it? What do you say? Nah, just let it ride. Don't worry about it, man. So he's saying, you sure you want to really right? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll come, I'll check it again. So I, you know what, we wait about two more hours to see what happens. 
And then all of a sudden it's time, hey, they found a cure for coronavirus 19. And the stock that you bought, guess what? Is it worth more money now? So now you're 11 hours later because you bought stock in a coronavirus or whatever it was you bought, the, the vaccines. So they say, you know what? It works really great. People want to buy it. They want to have your coronavirus, antivirus stuff. So right now it's worth $21,000. So now here's the thing. Hi. Right. The absolute min. What do you think the absolute min is of this thing? What's the lowest it ever went? What is it? Somebody said nine, nine one, yes or no? Yeah, that's right. Nine hours after you put your money in the stock market, you go, oh man, it's only worth a thousand dollars. Yeah, the the the, the antibacterial, the the coronavirus medicine you bought, it's not. Nobody has proven it. It's working. Okay, it's not worth much. Then all of a sudden. The greatest president ever in the world, President Trump, <laughs> says it does work. And he said that my Fuji, Dr. Fuji, tried it on 300 people, and all 300 got cured. Guess what? I said it's going to work. At least it worked on 300 people anyway. So then, because of that, can, your, can the value of your stock go up? Yes or no? Big time, right? So after 11 hours of putting money in the stock market is worth 21 so so here's my question what is the absolute max 11 21 at 11 21 okay. all right so at nine it was 1000 that was your lowest and at 11 it was what 21,000 so now this is what you do when you buy stock you get it and then whenever you feel you, you make the most money, you sell it. You call the guy to the stock. Hey, sell my stuff. When? Right now. Sell it right now. As soon as he sells it, that's what the price you're going to get. And if you start dropping on, I don't care because I already sold it. I got my cash. I got my $21,000 in my checking account. I'm done. Does that make sense? Like, I know you, you're those when people say, I'm saving my 401k and stuff like that or retirement money for the future when I stop working. That's what that's, that's about. No, you don't have 401 case? Nobody? What? You don't work in, no? You don't have like annuities and perpetuities and 401 ks and retirement funds, nothing? Zero? Zero? Um, nothing at all? I don't think you could do it until like you're 21, no? You can do it anytime you want. No, you can do it when you're like a teenager. You can be 13 years old and buy stock. I mean, the stock you can you can buy stock anytime you want. You get somebody to put it in there, and you can just buy it. The four hundred one, yeah, you're right. The four hundred one stuff like that. When you're working somewhere, if you're eighteen at Walmart, hey, they'll let you do four hundred ones. You're sixteen years old at, at Target, they'll let you do four hundred ones. They do all that stuff. They will let you do it if you want to. But anyway, so absolute max min, absolute min, and then absolute max is this one. Absolute max is this guy right here. Does that make, is everybody okay with absolute max, absolute mins? There's a bunch of other min, max, min, max, but I don't care about the little, the other ones. The one I want to know is what's the absolute lowest we went? What's the absolute what? Most they went, the max. Does that make sense? Or absolute max, absolute min? Yeah. Like I'll give you an example. How much, hey, I have a question for you. How much does it cost to take classes at Palo Alto? If you take 12 hours, how much do you think that tuition is? Just guess. Uh, like a thousand something dollars? Yeah, it's like twelve hundred, right? Something like that, fourteen hundred. It depends, you know, if you have labs, they charge you more money. But let's listen to that. If you take twelve hours at Palo Alto, you're gonna probably pay one thousand two hundred or somewhere in there. It depends on the zone, right? All right. So now I'm gonna tell you right now. So I went to I went to San Antonio College and then from there I transferred to Texas State and then I finished my bachelor's and my master's over there. But SAC, is that the same thing as Palo Alto prices? The answer is yes, it's still 1200 bucks, man. So then, and then when you go to Texas State, is that a state school? So is the tuition uh, yeah. school by the state? Big time, man. But my brothers and sisters, I'm gonna tell you where they went. 
you heard of that school, St. Mary's University? Is that a private school? Yes. Do they charge more than $1,200 for the whole semester? Yes. I'm going to tell you how much they charge them to go there for one semester. Barato, $1,200. You go, man, that's a lot of money. Oh, damn. But then I asked my, my, my brother, say, hey, how much do y'all pay for one semester at St. Mary's? <laughs> they said, it's a lot. They said, well, give me a number. This is what they told me. Yes, it's thousands of dollars. What, do you know what that number is? 35000? What does that mean? $35,000 to go one semester to St. Mary's. I said, come to SAC, man. They go, no, we want to go to St. Mary's, a private school. I said, but you're going to have to sign student loans. So if you sign student loans for 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35, 35 do you owe lots of money to the student loan people? Yes. But if you go 1200 1200 I mean, that's still, it's still a lot of money. $1,200, $2,400 that you owe, right? So you're going to owe probably like $4,000, man. But when they came out of college, they told me, I said, how much do you owe this school? They said, over 200000 So I told them, 200000 Yeah, but we didn't pay it off in 30 years, though. Oh, okay. So then I told them, why didn't you go to SAC with me? Why didn't you go to state, Texas State with me? They said, no, we didn't want to go. We wanted to go to a private university with our best friends from high school. I said, okay, that's fine. Cool. I'm glad. Anyway, let me stop right there. What time is it? Give me a time. 12.08. Uh, the next one will take longer. Okay, I'm going to start right there. This is what I want you to do for your, you're going to go test number one on my math lab, and you're going to do question number one, two, three, five, and I think you already did those, but, and then six, seven, eight, and what do we get to the number nine, right? Okay. So, so for next Monday, I'll check on Sunday night. I'll check the uh, the computer. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine. To so do those do those questions and and once you get it, get the answer. You'll have a check mark by your name. Does that make sense? Just do that. If you get it wrong, do it again. If you get it wrong, do it again. Just keep doing it till you get it right. Okay. All right. Also, try to get a TI eighty three or a TI eighty four. 83 or 84, one of those machines by next Wednesday, a week from today, not 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 Monday, but when? One week from now. Bring what? Get a TI-34, okay, I'm gonna start doing stuff graphing. If you're not, you're just gonna sit there all lost on it, man. All right? Okay, well, let me, let's stop right there, that's fine. Everybody okay with it? Everybody okay with it? Yeah? All right, man. All right, do not, I'll talk to you on Monday. Have fun in the weekend, okay? Have fun Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yes, sir. All right, I'll see y'all later, man. I'm going to shut it off. I'm going to shut it off. Yeah, I got a question. Oh, man, who is this? Who is this? Okay, ask me. <laughs> hey, ask me. So I'm we just... only have to do Save Kelly and then the four test? Yeah, the Save Kelly, don't even do that one because that ones are easy numbers, and that one I'm just going to use as a lab grade. In other words, you know, that's that's just something, that's something that I use to curve your grade up. Does that make sense? Like if, if at the end I go, ah, oh, man, he has an 87. I don't want him to get 87. Oh, look, he did save Kelly. He did a bunch of them. Can I add three points to his, to his uh, average? Yes, because he worked extra hard on the Kelly. So that one I use it just to curve things up. Does that make sense? But if you got test one, two, three in the final, you have a bunch of 90, 90, 90, 90. Do you have to do save Kelly? Yeah, you don't need to. You're, you're good enough as it is. But that one is it's just my what I use for curving grades. Does that make sense? Okay, so, thank you so much. Oh, so that's all. If you got like, you got sixty six, you go, man. I don't want to get a stupid D in this class. Oh, don't worry about it. You did the Kelly ones. Yeah, yeah. Okay, don't worry. It's, it's, now it's a C. Don't worry about it. So, but what you need to worry about is only test one, two, three, and the final. Do so. What are you gonna do? Test number one. Those questions I tell you. That's what you're gonna do. That's all. Any other questions on it? No. Okay. Well, I'll see y'all later, man. Good luck. Have fun on the weekend. I'm going to lock it off in a second, about 30 seconds. I'm going to shut it off. Let's see. All right, ready? And oh, see you all later. Monday? Yes? Is yeah, go ask me. Ask me. Go ahead. Uh, when is test one due? And then also, there's no due date on them. 
I changed all the dates because they had some dates on the calendar that you turn in by this day. It doesn't matter. If you turn it in, if you finish it one week from now, two weeks from now, three weeks from now, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to, I'm just going to, all I'm going to do is the last week of December, I'm going to make sure that you did test one, two, three in the final. That's all. That's the due date. The last week of, of the first week in December, that's your due date. How's that? For everything. So if you don't finish test one this week, don't worry about it. If you finish next week, don't worry about it. You finish next week. See what I'm saying? So it, it doesn't matter. As long as you finish them by the first week in December, you're good. Okay. Is there, everybody okay with that? Yes. I think it's okay. All right. Anything else you want to ask me? Nah. Okay. Well, I'll see you later. I'm going to share it off then. I'm going to take out, take out my Zoom land here. All right. Thank you. Bye.